The Lord be with you and, and with, with your spirit. spirit. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus went off to the other side of the Sea of Galilee or of Tiberias, and a large crowd followed him, impressed by the signs he gave by curing the sick. Jesus climbed the hillside and sat down there with his disciples. It was shortly before the Jewish feast of Passover. Looking up, Jesus saw the crowds approaching and said to Philip, Where can we buy some bread for these people to eat? He only said this to test Philip. He himself knew exactly what he was going to do. Philip answered, Two hundred denarii would only buy enough to give them a small piece each. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said, There is a small boy here with five barley loaves, and two fish. But what is that between so many? Jesus said to them, Make the people sit down. There was plenty of grass there, and as many as five thousand men sat down. Then Jesus took the loaves, gave thanks, and gave them out to all who were sitting ready. And he then did the same with the fish, giving out as much as he as wanted. When they had eaten enough, he said to the disciples, Pick up the pieces left over, so that nothing gets wasted. So they picked them up and filled twelve hampers with scraps left over from the meal of five barley loaves. The people, seeing this sign that he had given, said, This really is the prophet who is to come into the world. Jesus, who could see they were about to come and take him by force and make him king, escaped back to the hills by himself. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Please be seated. Praise the, Praise the Lord. My dear brothers and sisters, today we are going to reflect about this Bible passage that is about the multiplication of the five loaves of bread for 5,000 people. Let us read this word of God once again. Gospel of John chapter 6 verse 1 onwards. 6 1 onwards. After this, Jesus went to the other side of Sea of Galilee, also called the Sea of Tiberias. So the, Jesus went to the other side near um, Beersheba area. So he went to the other side of uh, Tiberias. And let's read verse 2. A large crowd kept following him. Because they saw the signs that he was doing for the sick. So many people, they, most of the people who followed Jesus because they want to see miracles and they want to receive healings. Two types of people who follow Jesus. One is those who follow Jesus because they love him. Second group, those who follow Jesus because they want healing and miracles. Even today, among the Christians, there are these two types of people. There are so many people who follow Jesus because they really love him. Those who love Jesus and follow him will never be shaken in the moments of crisis and problems. But there are also people who follow Jesus and call out the name of Jesus only for healing and miracles. Even they attend the live streamings and our healing services only for healing and miracles. So such kinds of people... It is difficult to get healing, first of all. Secondly, they will be shaken in front of small, small problems. When there is a small sickness, small problem, small, small temptation, they will fall very fast and they will be shaken. But at the same time, my, my dear brothers and sisters, so today and in the beginning, when Jesus started his ministry, most of the people followed him because they, say, they saw the miracles. And the same people... When Jesus was caught by the soldiers, when he was taken for prison, everyone abandoned him. Nobody followed him. No one wanted to stand for him because they knew now Jesus is in the prison. What's the point in following him? 
So many people are like this. When there is a problem with Jesus, when there is a problem for Jesus, they don't stand with him. When Jesus heals, he, they, all want the receive, they all want to receive the healing. But when Jesus is beaten and flogged, nobody stands with Jesus except his beloved mother. All the others, everyone left him. So this is what. So this large crowd kept following him because they saw the signs that he was doing for the sick. Verse 3. Jesus went up the mountain and sat down there with his disciples. So he was sitting on the uh, uh, on a stone and he was and uh, they were on the mountain top and the disciples were there. And then suddenly we read verse 4. Now the Passover, the pa festival of the Jews was near. Passover time. That is very important time for the Jewish people. And they, it was coming near. Verse 5. When he looked up and he saw a large crowd coming toward him. He saw a large crowd, more than 5,000 people. And he saw all of them are there. From around, the, from all the sides, people who started coming to Jesus. He looked up and he saw. The moment he saw the people, the first thing he felt is, they are hungry. They are hungry. So another gospel, he said, they were going on listening to the preaching of the word of God for more than three days, around three days, without even having anything to eat. So Jesus felt compassion for them. When he looked up, he saw the large crowd and he knew the need of these people. So my dear brothers and sisters, looking up is very important. We also read in the gospel, gospel of Luke chapter 16, we read the parable of the Lazarus and rich man. Rich man was eating sumptuously every day. But Lazarus, a sick man also on the roadside and at the gate, he was being licked by the dogs, nothing to eat. But this rich man was always looking at the table. He never looked up. He never looked up. So he never was not bothered. He was not bothered about the poor Lazarus, the sick man. But later, when last the rich man died, he was taken to the Sheol, and then being in the being tormented in the Sheol, he looked up. We read like this. He looked up and then he saw Lazarus. We read Gospel of Luke chapter 16 verse 6. So, we read like this. Gospel of Luke chapter 16 verse 21, 23, 23. 16, 23. We read like this. The word of God says, he in Hades where he was being tormented, he looked up and then saw Abraham far away with Lazarus his side. Then he wanted to do something for Lazarus and also he wanted to use Lazarus. So he, when he looked up, he saw the others. Until then he was only seeing his food on his table. So in Jesus case, Gospel of John chapter, uh, six, chapter, five, uh, chapter 6 verse 5, we read like this. Jesus looked up and saw a large crowd and he had compassion for all of them. My dear brothers and sisters, in these moments of COVID-19, when we are so busy in our own world, everyone is isolated and we have no connection with the outsiders and we keep ourselves inside and only connection is only through the social media or mobile or phone and we have no connection with others in most of the places because of the COVID situation. But God wants us to look up and look around. Look up and look around and see so many are in need. So many are hungry. So many are in crisis. And we need to ask the same question which Jesus asked. Where are we to buy bread for these people to eat? We need to answer to these questions. And we need to do something. So the Lord is inviting all of us to look up and see and around, see around and you see so many people are in need and you, we need to feel compassion as Jesus felt. So here in this case, Jesus asked Philip, there were so many people, so many disciples, out of the 12 disciples, Jesus asked only to Philip. Why Philip? 
because Philip is from that area. Philip is his hometown. That is his hometown. Near the Bethsaida, uh, Bethsaida uh, area, especially the other side of the Tiberias, is the side that is from where Philip comes. His local area. He is the local person. So Jesus is asking the local person, where are we to buy bread for these people to eat? Then Philip, as a man of the local, local man, he started calculating everything. And he calculated, calculated, and the end he said, even six months wages are not enough to feed these 5,000 people. After a long calculation, he came with the conclusion. And the conclusion was a negative conclusion. He said, it is impossible. Not even the six months wage is sufficient. So we can't do anything. It is better send them away. No way we can feed these people. So Philip is the local person. He, if at all, out of the tall disciples, if at all, if someone can do something, that is only Philip can do it because he is from the local, local area. But he said, "We are helpless." And we read verse seven. Philip answered him, six months wages would not buy enough bread for each of them to get a little. Even if he give small piece of bread or something, all these 5,000 people, six months wage is needed. And therefore, it is impossible. So Philip thought, when God asked one question, when Jesus asked one question, Philip thought he, it is his duty and responsibility to find the solution. So when God asks you some questions, when God puts some question mark in front of you, doesn't mean you have to bring the solution. If God allows some questions, that means he has the answers too. If God allows some problems, that means he has the solutions too. Without solution, he will never allow any question in front of you. We read 1 Corinthians 10.13. 1 Corinthians 10.13. No testing has overtaken you that is not common to everyone. God is faithful and he will not let you be tested beyond your strength. But with the testing, he will also provide the way out so that you may be able to endure it. No testing has overtaken you that is not common to everyone. God is faithful. He will not let you be tested beyond your strength. What does it mean? He will not allow your problem without the solution. If you give an a testing, that means there is a way out already. If there is no way out, he will not give you a test. He will not allow you a test in your life. If God has allowed you a test in your life, that means there is a way out. So when Jesus asked Philip, where are we to buy bread for these people? And there was five. Let's read once again. Gospel of John chapter 6 verse 5. When he looked up and saw a large crowd coming toward him, Jesus said to Philip, Where are we to buy bread for these people to eat? Verse 6, we read like this. He said this to test him, for he himself knew what he was going to do. Jesus himself knew what he was going to do. My dear brothers and sisters, many questions are there raised in front of you. Many problems that are there in front of you, permitted in your life. Many crises that you are going through. You think you have to find the solutions for all these problems. You think you have to settle all these problems by yourself. There is nobody to help you. You think only you can handle it and only you have to do it because there is no one else to do it. Because there is a question mark in front of you. There is a problem in front of you. Now the Lord says, he said this, he gave you this problem, he gave you this crisis, he gave you this tension, he gave you this stress to test you, to test you, to see how committed you are, how faithful you are, how sincere you are, how uh, dependent on God you are. God is testing you and God allows this test in you. Because he himself knew what he was planning to do. He himself knew. He himself knows what he is going to do in your life. That means 
you don't expect he doesn't expect you to find the solution for it he just gave you this problem to test you to see how you react to see how bad your faith is to see how weak you are fragile you are in your faith but he said this he allowed this test in your life to just to see test you and he but he himself knows what he is planning to do god knows what the solution is god knows what he's going to do god knows the best and god is going to do the best don't worry the lord says my dear brothers and sisters are you going through a testing period are you going through a family problem are your children going through a family a personal problem relationship problem addictions and disturbance and wrong relationship or are you all going through a financial problem don't worry with your capacity you cannot solve it for your problem you may have tried one solution that is failed second solution that is failed third solution that is failed now you looked around there is no more solutions and that is when you get disappointed frustrated thinking of committing suicide and thinking of getting drunk and then for, forget about the realities of this life and you feel hopeless helpless and you feel completely shattered because you tried all the solutions available for you and now you know all these solutions which you think the best is useless and therefore you are feeling hopeless but god is telling you right now today jesus is telling you today my dear children for your problem you have maybe only one or two or three solutions and you tried all these solutions but all these solutions are useless for you but let me tell you for your problems i have hundreds of solutions unimaginable solutions beyond your expectation i have hundreds of solutions for your problem just trust in me just come to me i will show you how i i bring the solutions for your life for your problems you know sometimes when some big problem comes in front of you you will wonder how are you going to solve it how are you going to settle it and you feel cry and you go for retreats you cry in front of god and say lord how am i going to so solve this problem and then suddenly when the time comes you see the problem just just disappeared you know after the death of jesus when jesus was buried in the tomb there was a big stone and they kept kept at the entrance of the tomb and some ladies mary magdalene salome and other ladies they wanted to go and anoint the body dead body of the lord jesus christ on the third day early morning as they were going to the dead the the tomb of jesus they were discussing among themselves what did they discuss they said who will remove the stone for us there is a big stone who will remove this stone for us there is a huge stone who will remove the stone for us it's a big problem for them they knew it's a big problem because no men are with us we are only women we can't remove that such a big huge stone they knew there is a big problem that they are going to face when they started from their home they didn't think of it but on the way they were discussing who will remove the stone who will help us and when they reached the tomb they saw the stone is already removed stone is already removed my dear brothers and sisters you are in the journey in this journey you are wondering who will remove this problem who will remove this sickness who will remove this family problem who will remove these even when you worried when you are stressed up remember remember where are you heading towards you are heading towards jesus behind this stone there is jesus behind that stone in the tomb there is jesus this confidence made these women to go forward and when the when they reach the tomb the stone is already removed my dear brothers and sisters go forward the block is removed already go forward trusting in the lord believe jesus is there behind you are heading towards jesus you are calling on the name of jesus 
go forward move forward don't worry about any problem that is facing in your in front of you don't worry don't try to bring solutions he will bring solutions he knows the best solution sit in front of him move forward and you will see block will be removed already by the time you reach there the problem is already solved beyond your imagination unexpected ways so the lord is telling us this so jesus in today's gospel this is exactly what jesus wants to tell us do not worry my dear children if you if i have put a question mark in front of you if i have given you a crisis in front of you a problem in front of you that is not for you to run after the solutions that is not for you to be stressed up with the, to find out a solution and solution for all the problems that is just to test you whether you trust me that is to test you whether whether you trust me that is to test you whether you have confidence in me that is to test you that you trust you have you depend on me that's all i know what i'm going to do in your life i know what i'm planning to do in your life so therefore don't be shattered don't be disappointed don't be hopeless and helpless come back to me and this is what the lord is telling us today my dear brothers and sisters on this day let's thank the lord and glorify god for this wonderful message the lord is giving us through this word of god and let's trust him and say lord i trust in you i trust in you lord i surrender myself totally unto you lord bless me lord and every problem that i'm facing now i surrender everything unto you you will find the solution you know everything and you can handle it i thank you lord